Okay, let's see what we did last time. And then let's create a branch first. Okay, I created the branch. Now Now, let's see what we did here last time. <laughs> we were doing the parse server and uh, I created two. One, one is example and example view. So, last time I did this one as, uh, you know, either flat list or we can loop through the array. Let's delete this part. Okay, so let's delete this part and then I just want to show you the add, edit and delete part and that's the reason we are seeing the text here. Okay, and this is the example so this is the addition part we did last time. We can add we can add data to the parse server. So that was this one. So okay, we are showing this one right. Let me check what we did. Okay, so this is something we add the data to the server. And this is something we view the data. This is the home page where we show the example. Okay, we show the example. Let, let's run this and see what we have done it. Okay, so let me go to integrate terminal, yarn, expo, start. Okay, it started. Let me run in my mobile. One second, let me run in my mobile. Okay. Yeah, one second, I'm loading the expo. Okay, so for now, what I will do is, uh, if you go to home page, we have we have this example view, and then this is example. Let's for now. One second, let me see what to do. Okay.
I cannot share my mobile. Let me check. Said no. What I'll do, I'll hide other stuff like uh, like login, logout because those are not really needed for now. But let me let me log, log in. Yeah, because a lot of things are there, and we have scroll view and flat list in one page that that creates some problem. Or uh, or I can do it like this. I will put the example view below the example and instead of flat list I will loop it so that so that uh, we can see this we can see this properly so let me do that in the example view instead of flat list okay instead of flat list we'll loop it okay for now so I'm looping it so I can see all this one. Let's log in again with some user, user 3, and password is P. Okay, let's see. Let's refresh. I want to see if I'm logged in or not, so let's try to put the uh, logged in user details also. So maybe I will. Okay, I want to see the logged in user detail. So let's see. Let's. Let's see when I submit it. Okay, user is null. So if if user is not logged in, we show this error message. So let's try to log in. Okay, I'm logged in now. Now if I try to enter, you will see I can add the record. So this is the example of this is the example of submission. Okay, so what I'll do, I will create some function file so that we are clear what to do. I will create a function file and in that I will create I will import the parts I will import the parts and I will create few functions for example export constant add data so this one is the add data another function I will create is export constant update data so this one will update the data and third function I will call as export constant delete data. So we should know how to delete in the past server, how to update in the past server, how to add the data and the last one will be export constant view data. 
Okay, so this will give the list of all the records which we have from the past server. And the last one will be if we want to see only one single record. View single data, maybe view single record. So these are the functions which we can use in all the application. So we'll be copying from this file whenever we will work for any other project. So these are the only functions which are used in our parse server majority of time. So for example, I will just go here and copy some of them. So let's copy here this one post.save. And I'll make this as asynchronous call and create this one. So I will create a post one and this all the information like title and the user will come as a parameter. And if I have another thing also, I will also send it here as a object here as a parameter. So what things I will be getting, I'll be getting title, user, and if we have description, we can put description if we are putting some age, we can send age also. And many data we can send as a parameter. Right now we will only send the two two of the record, one is title and the user. And we will be getting that here. So I will get title here, this one, and user one is this one. I will set the record to public, true, public and read access. And only the user who is the logged in he can write it, otherwise public will cannot write the data. And once it is saved, I will return the post so that I can use it anywhere I want. So now what I'll do in the example, I will import this function, add data from the function. And instead of calling this post part, I will call the add data. And here I will pass object. One will be the title, which is nothing but state dot title, and the user. User is nothing but this user. So I'll be passing title and the user. I will delete all this part, and I will return this as a post so I can see here what is the post. Okay, so we will be able to see the post. So instead of writing the post part here, I created a function and I I am using the post here to watch it. Okay, let's try now. Test one. Let me submit it. So you will see post one is here, we are getting the data and we got the data here. Okay, that is the email and what is the data we pass? Mm -hmm. Title test one. If I pass test two, here I'm getting test two. So both the records went successfully. That means add data function is working correctly. So before I go further, just, uh, just create this function file and use it in the use it in the example. So I'm giving you this home component. Example component again if you want to change it. And example view you already have it from the previous one. So then also I will give you this one also if you want to grab it in the telegram. So give me uh, just try to use this and let me know if it works. I'll be asking in two minutes.
Okay, so if you're not written, you can write it later. Let's try to put this view part also inside the inside the function. So this is the gate data which we call it. Let's copy this gate data in the function. So here I will make it async and I will be passing page and max here. Okay, so instead of gate data there, we create this view data here. And we can write down as many conditions here what we want for the query part. And so instead of now gate data, we will call the view data. So let me call the view data. And instead of here calling the gate data, we call the view data and we'll not call this gate data. Here also we call the view data. Okay, so let's try this one. Yeah. Let's restart it again. Sorry. Started. So this restart part happens in the development only, and uh, in once you develop, you don't have to worry. In the development, many times it doesn't doesn't give as expected. We have to restart every time if, if there is problem. Okay, so now. So now again I will do it. Okay, there is some key. There is a some key problem. Let's see where the key. Okay, here we are looping. So we have to give the key. Okay, so this is the key. Okay, and now we are not getting the key one. Test three. Test four. Okay, now the test port should come here. Okay, we are getting the test port here. <coughs> we can also create the refresh part as we have seen in the previous one, how to refresh it. In the scroll view, we can refresh the data. But right now, the scroll view is using the many items. So I cannot use it. But if we have only scroll view for this one, on one page, then we can scroll it and we can refresh on the clicking the clicking this uh, clicking it below okay now what let's see okay let's see one second okay so we finished the uh, we finished the uh, add part and we finish the view part let's uh, view the single record okay so single record needs the uh, id which id we want to fetch so it will be same thing which we have this one so if you want to fetch only the single record so i will say query dot equal to and here I will say object ID is equal to ID which I am passing it. This is the ID I am passing it. We don't need this descending escape with count. And we have to use the first one. Only the one record we have to find it. And we will return the record which we will get it. So when let's say someone click each one, I will try to get this single record. And just console it now. Let me call, call the single record. So when someone click it, then I will call this. So to make this click, either I have to create the button or I have to call the 
touchable opacity this is the this is the utility so this touchable opacity does the work of the button so say, say for example you have the text you cannot write down on click here on press here because this is a react native in that it doesn't allow if it is normal react we could have created a div tag and we can put on click on any div tag but here i have to wrap the things with touchable opacity and then i can call the press one on the touchable opacity so here i can call on press so when i call the on press i will call this function and here I will say constant uh, result equal to I will call the single record one and I will pass the item dot ID and then I'll check this is used when we have the detail page and we want to show the detail page to the user then we call the single one right now here we don't really need the single record but to show the example that single record is working I put it here but in real world we have a detail page then in detail page we call the single record and when we have the list page we call the view all like view data so if I click now you will see we are getting the record let's click this one so we are getting this one as a DDFF. If I call the watermelon one, I got the watermelon one. So we are calling the back end using the ID which we get it here using the touchable opacity. So we created another function called as view single record and this all functions will be used in any project which will work in few weeks. We'll start working on this project and this all functions will be used so these are the very important functions we'll go back to this page again and again to get the sample okay so this is I'll give you this file in in a minute okay so let's go further to update and delete it so update will be same thing as as the post like this only thing only change will be so only change will be it is similar to this one the only change will be I will be passing ID which ID want I want to update which post I want to update and then when I call the new post I will say post dot ID equal to ID so whatever ID I'm passing I will update it with this ID and in the update I don't want the user to be updated let's say admin is updating a record for someone so I don't want user to be updated with the user in the create one we need the user but in the update we don't need the user so I can delete the user okay and I don't need this one also in the update unless we want to update the ACL we don't need this ACL part also in the update so in the update what we want need it we need the title which I want to update it and and I need the ID which ID I want to update it right so this is the update part so now let's try to use the update one so in the example view I will also call the update record here and when someone will click I will view the single record and I will also update the record single record okay so let me update the record also when someone click it I can give the okay so okay so let me update the record also uh, right now I'll update the record I will not call the single record thing because we have seen what it is let's call the update one now I will call await update record and here I will pass the title I will just pass the custom title in reality it will be a form like the add data and we 
take the update part on the user but now I will be putting some custom text here and and one second okay hold on for one second okay so let's uh, let's call the update with the custom text and I want to pass the ID also which ID I want to update so ID will be item dot ID and after the data is updated after the data is updated I want to I want to call this handle refresh that is I want to get the data again to show it to the user otherwise user will not see the change here right so after update I will call await handle refresh okay it will take the data again so that we can see it okay now let's try it if I click this you will see that it became custom text because it is updated to custom text so wherever I click it becomes custom text in real world when you click something you can go to edit page and user will put edit text and once the user will put edit text we can call update with the text which user has put it but here just so I want to show the example of the update so I'm putting a custom default text here so that you know how to update the text okay some error is there let's see what is the error let's refresh and try again there is some problem okay let me refresh the app Okay, let's start again. Let's see why the error is there. Okay, let's try to now update it again. So we are getting okay, we are getting this, but we are getting error also. Unhead dealt promise ID equal to zero. Why we are getting ID equal to zero? Let's see. Let me see what's happening here. We are getting ID correctly. So if I do this one, let's see what happens. We're getting ID correctly and then we're getting the ID correctly. Let's see what happened with the update one, okay? So we are calling the post, we are calling this post, we are calling the ID, we change the title, we save this. Let's try to see the post. Okay, so let's try to see this one. Okay, okay so we got the item, but let's check the ID, what ID we are getting. Oh, somewhere it is breaking. Right, it is custom text. So here we got correctly. The ID is also coming correct. Title also coming correct. We set the ID. And then we set this one. Let's try to save. see the post here. Okay, let's try again. So we are seeing the post two with that custom text. Okay, let's try this bottom one. Okay, okay, here is a problem. We see the post two with the custom text. We saw the post two, but here object not found. Okay, 
Looks weird this one. Okay. Okay, let's let me refer the document. Uh, let's see the document. What it's saying. Path server talk. Okay, let's double check what is problem we are doing it. Update. So let's say we are updating the object. We are updating them. <laughs> okay, so this is the one way of doing it. I am not using this way. I want to use this way. What is the problem with this way? So we are getting the object. It's different ID. I need this. Okay, let's take this. What's up? Okay, let me double check it now. Okay, so let's try to update this one. So we are getting post two. Okay, so this is object ID of this one, right? We are matching this object ID, and the post four is also this one. So we are updating correctly. Let's click again. Okay, so this is also again it's working. Let's try this one. This one is this ID and this ID. Let's try this one. This is working fine. This is also fine. Let's try this watermelon part. Okay, this watermelon is giving some error. Let's try this one. Okay, here we are getting Okay, we are getting it correctly, but somehow Somehow we are getting this error Okay, let's check what is there in the database Mm -hmm. The watermelon we have the U U Q okay and here we are getting W Q somehow here it is U Q right and orange is W Q orange is WQ. Okay, this is correct. Okay, why I am getting error? The reason is you will see this is a different user, right? This is a different user, and so I cannot edit those one. If I create something, if I create something here, test one. Okay, I'm creating this test one. Let me refresh this one. So test one is there now. If I click this, I am able to edit it because I have permission to edit. And few things which I created yesterday were from different user, and so I'm not able to update those. Okay, so that's the reason we are getting error. And if we are getting error, we can show to the user that 
error is found you don't uh, you cannot edit it right this is the one way of editing updating the data okay let me remove the console there is another way of updating the data and that way is that way is you know i'll call this here let me show you another way so i'll comment uh, this one and i'll call that another way await here i have to pass the item which i want to edit it i, I will not pass id i will pass the item which i want to edit it so uh one second Okay, so what I'll do, I will pass the item. I will not pass the ID. I will pass the item, and I will I will pass key as a post, and value will be the item. So we are not passing the ID. We are passing the whole object item as a post. We can name it anything. Here I put it post, and then I will pass what fields I want to update it. Maybe title equal to custom. text to so previously i was passing id and the custom text another way is i directly pass the item the whole object as a post and the title which i want to update it and now where i will go here i will put it as a post instead of id i will get the post and though i then i don't need to create this post like this one the item is going as a post and directly i can update the post and directly i can save the post okay so here we don't need we don't need the id and we don't need to create the post again because it's already in the object of the post so now if i click this one you will see it becomes custom text 2 and now we are calling update data item so i'm making it custom text 2 Okay, so this is another way. Directly we pass the object and directly update the fields and save it. Previously I was passing ID, so I have to create the new one and then I want to set the title, updated title. Okay, so this is the two ways. And if we see the de uh, delete part, delete part is here destroying object. We have to just say the post dot destroy, and that's it. so if i want to delete it let's say i want to delete this one now i will call it delete delete one now let's call the delete also instead of update i will call the delete one and in the delete also so whenever i will click something i will call the delete one and i will just pass this post part which item i want to delete it so i will not pass the title or anything because i don't want to update it i just want to delete it and in the delete data i will expect that post will come and this will be async call and i will expect some post will come and i will call post dot destroy okay destroy will delete the data delete that post and i can return true okay so it will delete and it will return true so now what will happen when i will click something it will call the delete data with the item which i want to delete it this item will go as a post variable in the function and here i like post here and we'll say post dot destroy i can also remove the curly bracket here since this is a single item i can directly call the post if i delete the curly bracket then i have to also delete the curly bracket here then i can directly call the item here so if i pass item it will go in the function as a post and then post i will destroy it so let's try to destroy now i'll delete it see this is gone 
this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. Okay, this I cannot update it because I didn't create it, so I cannot delete it or update it. Okay, the only thing which I created can be deleted. Okay, yeah, so that's it for today. So what we saw, I have to restart that again today now. Okay, so what we saw, we add the data, we update the data, update data item, delete the data, view data, and the view single record. So all the CRUD operations, these are called the CRUD operations. That is create, read, update, and delete. So we have seen all the CRUD operations. And any application which, which we make will be using any one of this one. So these five or six functions are very important. Our whole project which we will create will be based on these five or six functions. So we'll be copying these functions again and again in any new project which we will start it. So make sure you remember this function. These are very important. And we have seen how it is used here. Let me comment comment this one, OK? So let me give you this file, and I'll commit also. You can get it. Tomorrow we'll see the live query. Live query means if someone is updating, we will see directly here without refreshing the page or without calling. Right now, we are calling this handle refresh again and again. But if we use the live query, we don't need to call the handle refresh. As soon as, as the data will be updated on the server, we'll see that directly the live update on our application. So this that will be used in the chat application or anything where you want to immediately a game. If you're making game to update the scores of the game, if you're making chess game, to play the chase game also we need the live data any any questions